So since we got a small group, I actually like that better. So ask questions, please. Just stop and interrupt me if you have a question. So let me just get a show of hands. How many guys have done a land title survey in the last six months or worked on? So two or three. I talked to my boss about it. He's doing a lot. Oh, he's doing right a lot. The door a couple of times. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the first ten years of my career, I, I did almost no, no land title surveys because I was a public works surveyor mostly. And then uh, I don't know about five years ago, <clears throat> I got involved in the private development side, and now I do them all the time. So I don't know. They're probably. 50% of my practice now. So, I don't know, Danny, we're doing one a month maybe? One or two. One or two a month. So I do a lot of them. Um, and so I've learned a lot about them. I've learned a lot about them. Um, and so we're gonna talk about some of the mistakes that I, I see surveyors making on uh, land title surveys a lot and some of the mistakes that I've made on land title surveys a lot. So, let's see what I got on the next slide. I can't how many, what percentage of them are associated with projects where you're exempt from filing a record survey because it's got a tenant in that? That's a great question. What was your name? Antonio. Antonio. So Antonio wanted to know how many records of survey am I filing? And it's a great question. Here's what I'd like to do, Antonio. I want to come back to your question because okay. it's a really important question. And there's a lot of crooked surveyors running around. So let me assure you that I'm not a crooked surveyor, and we will talk about what Antonio was asking about at the end because it was one of the things I had on the list. Oh, okay. okay. It's a huge issue, so we'll talk about it. But the short answer to Antonio's question is probably 50-50. Yeah. So about half of them I'm doing a record survey, and then about the other half I've got it. It's for a land development project. What percentage of the time where it's like, okay, I actually wouldn't have to file a record survey? If I do a land title survey, I do a record survey. No matter what. No matter what. Yeah, and we'll talk about, I'm not going to say there would never be a time when I wouldn't. Yeah. Um, the only time I wouldn't do a record survey on a, on a Alta where I wasn't going to have a tentative map would be uh, if it was something that had been surveyed in the last five years. You know, not when I say surveyed, I mean like surveyed Mons in, like, because otherwise I'm going to tell the client they're going to do that. So, but we'll talk about that at the end. It's a good question. Thank you, Antonio. I appreciate good questions. All right, so here's what I wanted to start with. I'm just a surveyor. I'm not a wizard. <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to, like, you know, feed my family, make sure Danny can make his house payment. Uh, so I'm not here to tell you I have all the answers. You know, sometimes you go to these talks and the guy stands up in the front and he's like, I'm going to, you know, I know everything and you're done. Okay, that's not what I'm here to tell you today. Um, so I'm, I'm just, I'm imperfect and I make mistakes. And the spec isn't always clear, we're gonna talk about that today. You know, when I was a young surveyor, I thought, oh, well the answer's always in the book. The manual always has the answer, right? And then I learned, no, it's not. Oh, the answer's not always there. I went to a really good talk. There's a guy that works at the BLM. If you took your seatbelt, you know, Dennis, I wanna say his name, Mullahan? Mullahan. 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 I'm probably butchering his last name, but. Dennis taught me a really good thing. I went to a, it, it actually wasn't in the CFEDS program, it probably should be, but I went to a talk he gave at a conference, and the name of the talk was something like what the BLM manual doesn't say. And his whole hour and a half talk was on stuff that's not in the manual. And he works for the BLM. He's like, yeah, sometimes you don't know. The manual doesn't tell you what to do. And you gotta use your professional judgment. And I just, that was a, I've never met Dennis, I hope I get to meet him. That was a profound moment for me as a, as a land surveyor because I walked out of the room going, wow, you know? I mean, the BLM man, how thick is that man, right? I was like, ah, all the answers got to be in there, right? And then, like, he totally ruined my worldview, Dennis did. But it was good. He ruined it in a good way, right? So that's how the Alta spec is. I mean, how many pages is this Alta spec? Six? Like, maybe seven? Like, are you going to cover everything in there? No, so there's gray areas, and we got some gray talk about some of what's in there. So the spec isn't always clear. The answers aren't always simple. I've been doing this a long time. I got a call from a buddy, a licensed surveyor of mine. He's working as a city surveyor, contract city surveyor, and he had an issue come up with some certificates of compliance. And the issue was whether or not the guy had two legal parcels. Okay, that was the basic problem. And him and I talked for 90 minutes, you know, because he's trying to make sure he's making 
make the right decision. He doesn't want to deny a guy a COC if he's really got to. And so there's problems with the deed, and there's a building over the line, probably, and we were talking. We talked for 90 minutes. I was more confused when I got off the phone than I was when I got on the phone with him, right? So this is hard stuff sometimes, and the answers aren't always clear. Okay, so I got to thank you for shutting that door, by the way. A couple of bozos out there parked in the hallway talking from outside the door. Probably my boss, probably. That's going to be on the video. Yeah, sure. That's okay. Don't stand outside of doors at a conference and talk. It's very rude. Put that on YouTube. All right. So I saw this cartoon the other day and it made me laugh. I thought, this is my career in a nutshell. So this is the learning curve you go through as a land surveyor, right? So this is where Elena's at. Elena's my cat tech. Okay, she just, how long have you been working Elena for? Five months? So you go, she's down here. This is impossible, right? Okay, then you move up to, I'll never be good. Okay, that's probably where Hunter's at. I'll never be good, boy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is Danny, probably. Here we go, I'm finally getting this, right? Okay, and then like, you know, like, I don't have anybody here working for me that is at this level, but what was I worried about? I'm pretty good at this, right? Then you get to the top. I totally got this. That was me like five years ago, right? Like, fear no survey, right? Okay, here's where I am now. I can't believe I thought I knew what I was doing. Right? That's where you end up. I'm actually past that. I'm like down here at the x-axis of, of the graph somewhere. <laughs> I tell, I tease, I tease my people, I tell them my career has definitely peaked. I'm like on the downhill slope, you know. So, but isn't that true about survey? Anybody else feel about that, right? Like, the longer I do it, I'm like, you know, I look back on some of the surveys I did, I'm like, man, I can't believe I thought I knew what I was doing, right? Some scary stuff. Yeah, George? Yeah. Oh, you were raised with yeah, George knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. I was telling, uh, Danny, I think it was yesterday, I think it was Danny I was telling him. I went to an elevation at uh, FEMA or DWR, somebody does a little half a day elevation certificate class. It's really good, yeah, I've been. And I went to it and realized I've been doing elevation certificates wrong for like 10 years. Like picking the lowest adjacent grade in the wrong spot and just like, yeah, you just sometimes you don't know. That's why you go to conferences, right? So you can learn that kind of stuff. So I don't know what I'm doing. Congratulations. All right, so we're going to talk about five mistakes that guys make on land title surveys. I see this all the time. I see it at my company. I see it at other companies that work in the Bay Area. Um, sometimes I argue about it with my boss. Um, and it's really horrible because we're licensed professionals and we're supposed to know what we're doing. And uh, also, I'll tell you a story. Well, let me tell you. So here's mistake number one. You're not reading the spec. I'm totally serious. We aren't reading the spec. When we do a land title survey, there's one part of the spec we read, you, I read usually every time. What part of the spec do I read when I get a survey? Usually. Table, table A. I always read Table A because I can't remember the 22 items on Table A. Right? So every time I do an all I read Table A. What do I do with the first seven pages? Table A is at the end. How often do I read the first seven pages? Yeah, I know. Like, I read it before I gave this talk. Like, right? But, like, I, I don't pull that spec out and read it every time I do a land title survey. Right? Should I? Yeah. Yeah, I probably should. maybe I should. Just skim through those seven pages, right? Yeah, so we don't read the spec. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you a funny story about reading the spec. Danny might have worked on this with me a little bit. They're never gonna come to one of my classes again. But we were working on a, some lap code descriptions. Anybody ever done lap code descriptions for an annexation? Man, who wrote that spec? <laughs> like a cross between a GIS pro and a civil engineer is like a surveyor's nightmare. But I've done them, we do them. So I had some, pro some property we were annexing. So I wrote the descriptions and, and I wrote them for the spec. Got, got this, it'd been a long time since I did it. I'd done it, it'd been a few years. So I got the spec out and I'm training a bunch of people too. So I said, when we got the job, I said, get the spec. Let's go read the spec and see what we have to do. It's a really good thing to do with your people. So I read the spec, wrote the descriptions, sent it into the county surveyor. He bled all over them, right? Gives me back his red lines. He's asking for a bunch of stuff that violates the spec. Like, so for example, the LAFCO spec says they don't want you to call out deeds in your description because LAFCO people don't know how, what to do with that, right? So they tell you, do not call it the north line of OR 322-510. They want you to call it the south line of the street or whatever it is, right? So what do you think the county surveyor wanted all over my LAFCO descriptions? You want it to be a legal description. Yeah. The very first thing that spec says, legal description. Right. Now, I'm not saying that the LAFCO spec isn't stupid. Yeah. It might be stupid. Am I in charge of the LAFCO spec? No. 
So I got a right to the spec. The LAFCO spec is stupid. Okay? So the county surveyor says, you got to add all these document references because he thinks it's a legal description. Right? So, Danny, what do we do? Danny don't know. He's going to deny it. It might not have been him. It might have been that. So we go in and we add all the deed references to all the lines and the maps. Okay? Send it back to him. Okay? He quits. I get a new county surveyor. Okay? That county surveyor reviews my legals, sends it back, says, take out all the deed references. Right? Then he tells me, I want you to add a tie here and I want you to add a tie here. Right? So I emailed him back and I said, hey, the ties you're asking me to add don't meet the spec. I said, if you want it, I will add the ties, but if you want them to meet the spec, here's how they have to be written. Here's the section of the spec. So I had two county surveyors licensed in California who will remain anonymous. They'll see the YouTube video and know who they are. Checking my lap for descriptions, and before they sat down with the red pen, neither one of them did what? They didn't read the spec that I was trying to meet. That is ridiculous. And it should be, that should be, like, that should be illegal. Like, how, like, how did they check that and not read the spec? Right? So probably, if somebody brings me an Alta survey to peer review at my job, what should I probably have sitting next to me besides table A? Probably the spec. Okay, so we don't read the spec. So, I've got a pop quiz. You should probably be handed the spec while you're taking Yeah, yeah, probably. He should have the spec too. So, I've got a pop quiz. We're going to see how well we know the spec. I didn't tell anybody there was going to be a quiz because nobody would show up. Okay, so we're going to do tell. We're going to. We're going to. Don't feel bad. You're going, to, you're going to give me wrong answers. That's the point. I didn't know the answers to this either before I read the spec. Okay, so here you go. So here's what I want to know. I want to know. You guys raise your hand and tell me yes or no. Is this in the spec? Okay. Be brave for me. Be just be courageous. Okay. The procedure for requesting a land title survey. In the spec, yes or no? What do you think? Raise your hand for me. Yes. Antonio? Yes, Antonio. Is it in the spec or not? Yes. It is in the spec. Good job. Uh, description of the normal standard of care. In the spec, yes or no? Yes. Hunter says yes. It is not in the spec. It's not in the spec. That, is, that is not in the spec. Okay? Uh, sources of uncertainty in the location for your boundary resolution. In the spec, yes or no? The sources of error in the boundary resolution. In the spec, yes or no? I'm going to say yes. What was your name? <laughs> Joe. Joe. Joe is correct. They actually have a list in the spec of the things that create uncertainty in your boundary resolution. Joe, right? Yeah. Good job, Joe. Okay. I have a big club of haters. I don't know if you were in it when we're done. <laughs> you guys are in my hater club. All right. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yes. I have a question on that. Is it the uncertainty about the position? Okay, no, not yeah, the that's, resolution. That's a separate second spec. That's a separate part of the spec. But okay. before that part of the spec, the spec says, here's the things that can cause uncertainty oh, in your boundary. Right. And that's one of the four things. That's only in the 2016, huh? It's 2016, 2016, yeah. Okay. Alright, okay. <laughs> Let's keep going, because this is fun. Uh, the appropriate use of GPS methods. In the spec, yes or no? What's your name, sir? Richard? Richard's correct. Not in the spec. Good job, Richard. Uh, documents that must be provided to the land surveyor. In the spec, yes or no? Yes. Ye yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, in the spec. Basically in the spec, yeah. Uh, the minimum required contents of the land title report or land title commitment. What has to be in the title report? In the spec, yes or no? No. Antonio says no. Antonio's correct. That's not in the spec. Uh, the land records that must be requested by the surveyor from utility service providers. In the spec, yes or no? Not in the spec. They don't tell you what you have to get. Right? Okay. Rule, okay. Rules for the number and extent of joiner parcels that must be surveyed as part of the boundary resolution. Do they tell you what you have to do with the joiners? In the spec or not? Not in the spec. Not in the spec. Uh, the information required on a surveyor's opinion of prescriptive rights to the subject parcel required through unauthorized, unauthorized use. In the spec or not? An opinion? Did you use the word opinion? Yes. Yeah. No, that's not in the spec. No. It's not in the spec. Yeah. They don't tell you what to do about unwritten rights other than you need, to, you need to know that they're made in, but they don't say anything else. Yeah. Okay. You never do that. <laughs> okay. a, we'll, talk, yeah, we'll talk to you. Federal, 
Because we'll maybe talk about it. The manner in which physical encroachments on the parcel boundary or building setback lines must be labeled. Is that in the spec? Yes or no? The manner? The manner in which they should be labeled. What do you think? Yes. Not in the spec? Thank you for being brave, though. I appreciate it. George, right? George is brave. I appreciate his bravery. Uh, standard symbology for found monuments, set monuments, and search found nothing. In the spec or not? No. Not in the spec. Type of information about buildings on the subject parcel that must be labeled and shown on the survey. In the spec, yes or no? Not in the spec. It's an optional table A item, and then all they talk about is the building item. Now, I've had to show all kinds of stuff. Number of floors, lot coverage ratio, right? That's not, none of that's in the spec. Um, Identification of water features on or crossing, crossing the subject parcel, in or out? Yes or no? Yes. Changed in 2016. It used to only be water features on the boundary, but now it's anything on the parcel. You can tell the door because I get all excited about this, right? Okay. Uh, identification of portions of the subject parcel that drain onto adjoining parcels. In the spec, yes or no? No. No. Kind of funny, right? Isn't that, don't you think that would be important? Not in the spec. You can put all the blue and run off you want onto your neighbor's property. You don't have to show it on your survey for the spec. Uh, identification of restricted land use boundaries on or across the subject parcel. So this isn't an easement, it's a land use restriction. Do you have to show that for the spec? Is that in the spec? Do they talk about it in the spec? What do you think? Richard, right? Richard says no. Richard is correct, not in the spec. Kind of weird, right? Don't you think that would be in the spec? So I'll give you an example of what, we're talking, what I'm talking about. In Stockton, uh, because we're in the, we're in a, we have major flooding issues, um, on almost any water body in the county, the county requires, the county has in place a, a, a big setback to the creek for repairing and habitat flood control. You can't do anything in that, okay? For the spec, you don't have to show that, based on, based on my reading of the spec. Well, they would have to, the requester would have to request that you yeah, they have to ask you to show it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let me ask you this question. Can you do a land title survey on an 8.5 by 11 sheet? Yes. For the spec. What do you think? Yes. Antonio says yes. George says yes. Yes. Minimum sheet size is 8.5 by 11. Uh, do they tell you how wide your margins have to be? Is there a minimum margin size? No. No. So yeah, they tell you the sheet size, but not the margins. Yeah, it's a little different. All right. How about uh, the date of all revisions? Does that have to be on the survey? Yes. Yes, it does. Yeah, good. Uh, the content of, uh, do you have to put a description of the revisions in your table of revisions for the spec? Or do you just push, put the dates in it? Yeah, it's not a description. Antonio says yes. What do you say? Yeah. Hunter says yes. What do you think, George? I don't know. George, George is taking a pass on this. Yes. George says yes. No, all you have to do is show the date. Okay. You don't have to. The spec says all you got to do is show the date. They don't, you don't have to say what you did, what you changed. So, like, look, that, I'm being a little bit of a, I'm, you know, I'm kind of giving you guys a hard time, but I didn't know the answers to these either. What's the point? Raise your hand if you're in the room and you're a licensed surveyor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of us. How old do we know the spec? Text. What grade? Well, give us a letter grade from A to F. What would you give us? F? We did better than F. These guys are brutal. They're like, fuck, fuck you, you fuck. I would say we did a C minus. Can I get a C minus? Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Our teacher always said C. He had a bungee, though. Oh, he had a bungee? Oh, okay. Well, he's just bitter. No offense, Dr. Bungie. But you have bitter students in my class. All right. Okay, so we're not reading this stuff. So what do we need to do? Did you read the spec? My boss and I argue about the spec. He says, I say, boss, we've got to do this. It's a land title survey. He says, no, we don't. That's not in the spec. I said, yes, it is. He said, go check. And I go check. I come back. I'm like, you're right. It's not in there. Right? Two days later, I'm like, boss, we've got to do this. It's not in the spec. I mean, it's a land title survey. It's in the spec. He says, it's not in the spec. He told me that last time and it wasn't in the spec. I said, it's in. Like, we've got to do it. He said, go check. I go back, check. And I said, come back. I said, yeah, it's in the spec. We do that. Okay? So the point is, you don't assume. What do you do? You go read the spec, right? Okay, so that's the first mistake. By the way, these are things that tell the truth in life. <laughs> Drunk people, small children, yoga pants, land and survey talk. Just giving it to you guys straight, right? 
Be careful with yoga pants. All right. <laughs> Mistake number two, you're changing the certification statement. Don't do that. You're not supposed to do that. Don't ever, 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 ever change the certification statement. Why do surveyors change the certification statement? Because CarMax told me to. Because CarMax wanted you to. Yeah. You're good. I like you. What's your name, Antonio? Yes. I might co present with him next time. Yeah. The lender's asking you to do that, or the title company, or the real estate agent. You guys know what I'm talking about? The certificate on it says, I, Lena Blake, here by Solomon Square, and wife of my firstborn child, that there's nothing wrong with this property, and you can sue me for everything I own if you find a problem. <clears throat> Sign the date. Something like that. It's yeah. a, little excessive. a little excessive, but actually, that's what the lender wants, Richard, right? The actual statement is not as bad as that, right? Like, I swear on the life of my second born child. It's not quite as bad. So, you yeah, guess. They want the statement that's enforceable under the law because if it's, if it's something a human can't actually do, right, it's yeah, a yeah. great point. But, like, but they'll get you right just short. Oh, yeah. It's like, I get crazy statements. Like, I mean, I, I just got asked a month ago for some kind of crazy statement. Like, I certify there's nothing underground on the property, including gopher holes. They're like, can you put this on there? I'm like, no. <laughs> okay, now here's the nice thing about it. This is because listen, here, uh, does anyone know how the all spec gets made? No. By a committee. Yeah, it's a committee, right? And so here's what they do they take like five title guys, and they take five surveyors, and they lock them in a room for two months. <laughs> and occasionally they throw in a piece of dead beef, right? And when those guys come out, they have an all spec. Okay, now what do those guys do in the room, the five surveyors and the five title guys? What do they do? Back and forth. Right? Negotiating, trading, right? Because what are the title? Who do the title guys want to take all the risk? The surveyors. And all the surveyors are like, no, we're not going to do it. And they go back and forth, right? So here, the guys, I don't know the guys that work on the Alta spec, the surveyors. They're saints. We should send them all free beer because they do a really good job. Because here's what they've done. They, they did two things for us. First of all, they gave us a pretty good certification statement, right? They're trying to protect us from the liability. It's pretty good. It could be a lot worse, okay? And secondly, they have in the spec a statement that says, if you change this statement, you do not have a land title survey. Why do you think they put that in there? That's like a, a poison pill. You guys know what a poison pill is? When you have a corporate takeover, you know what a poison pill is? That's like something the company, like they take their best asset and they sell it. It's a poison pill, because now you, they just got rid of what you're trying to buy, right? So, like, the surveyors put that poison pill in the office spec. Why? Why would they put a statement in there that says, if you change the certification, you don't have a title survey? Why would the surveyor? I guarantee you it wasn't the title guys. Because we, there are so many years of the gopher holes and that. Yeah! We just finally just said, enough is enough. We're not touching that certification statement. Period. Don't ask us to do it. So, what did they get? With? So, you're going to get asked, I guarantee you. If you do enough land title surveys, they're going to ask you to change the certification statement. The answer is always what? No. And they give you a pass, right? It's like, uh, I'm trying to think of an example. It's like when Elena asked me for a raise and I said, the boss said no, Elena, right? What am I doing there? I'm passing the buck, right? Like, you don't like it, go talk to him. Go talk to the boss, right? Okay, so the surveyors on the ALTA committee did us a favor. We can say, I can't change the cert. And they're gonna say, why not? And it's really easy to say because it's not allowed. You don't want to change it anyways, but that's not what you're gonna tell me. You're gonna tell me I can't because it's not allowed. Right? Okay, so that's why you do that. Now, I've heard people say, well, that you don't have you can't change that certification statement, but you can just add a certification statement, a separate certification statement to certify whatever they say to you. You can't do that either. That's also in the spec. Why do you think they put, they said, not only can you not change this certification statement, you shall have no other certification statements from the surveyor on your title survey. Why do you think they did that? Because they did the first change, and then, and then they, everybody started making us put separate certifications on there. So they said, we're not going to let you do that either. Now, here's what you can do. You can provide a separate work product with whatever freaking certification they want but it can't be on your title survey. And I'm gonna say, part of the reason they do that is if I've gotta provide you a separate work product, what am I gonna ask for? More money. 
Now, I had that come up on a job. I'm not telling you not to do it, guys. I'm just telling you don't do it on your land title story. So we just had a job. They wanted me to, to uh, certify the amount of landscape area on the parcel because that was part of the zoning land use regulation. Okay, so I said, I can do that for you, but I can't do it on my alt -head. So we provided a separate exhibit with a statement. And I was comfortable doing that. Like, we could see the landscape areas, I could measure it. I'm okay with that. I'll tell you how much there is, plus or minus. Right? But you can't do it on your, you can't, you can show that on your alt survey. You can show the landscape areas on your alt survey, but you can't certify that area. Uh, that is my current understanding of spec. Some of my haters on YouTube are going to correct me in the comments, I'm sure. But yes, what was your name? Uh, my name is Nick. Nick, go ahead, Nick. So we get asked that a lot for like ag surveys and in the plant area for trees or vines mm -hmm. or whatever. But, but a lot of times the way we do that would be like, um, what is it? In table A, you can write in what is it, you know, oh, what yeah. Want. yeah. So we'll say that, you know, we did table A, A item, yep. whatever. 22 or whatever. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and then we add that to the super. Okay, so yeah, that's, yeah, that's kind of a workaround. No, that's good, Nick. So Nick's saying you can add it as an optional table A, and then you list your table A's in the cert, and that's okay. You can do that. That's right. That's a workaround. And occasionally we'll even add, you know, whatever it is. It was 22, yeah. what, 22, 23, 24, yeah, right. Okay. I'm going to delete that from the video because I don't want the top people to know that. Okay. But no. you're right. Good, good comment. Only thing I feel comfortable with, though. Yeah, right. Okay, so don't change the certification statement. Because guess what? If you change it, and I'm working for them next, what do they want me to do? Change it. Yeah, so don't change it. Mistake number two.